Okay, welcome to Sense Space. Today, I am royally stoked to be here with Ryan Sprague. Ryan, cannabis expert, conscious cannabis coach, highly optimized podcast, and this one time on Psychedelics podcast. Man, this space is so unique. It's so cutting edge. And I was so happy to come across you and have just been learning so much from your work. So it's just fucking great to have you on. Uh, Jacob, thank you so much, man. You know, we were chatting before I hit record or before we hit record that I love like this is like, it's hard to put my finger on what my favorite thing to do is right. I think it changes every day. But podcasting, when I woke up today, and I was like, sick, the first thing on my calendar is a podcast. So great. Because if at the foundation of everything, I'm a connector. I love meeting people. I love seeing myself reflected in other people. I love learning different ways to go through life, different belief systems, different ways in which people view their reality. And the best way to do that is by getting to chat with people. So man, I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Well, let's dive right in. I'm I'm really hoping, you know, you talk a lot about the the practicalities of relating well with cannabis. Um and also the cultivation of the plant, which is a whole other domain. Um, in this conversation, I want to get a little more into like the big vision of conscious cannabis culture and some of the different ways that it can like really meaningfully connect with the culture as it is today and the challenges that we face. Mm. So just to start out, like what is cannabis? And then what is conscious cannabis? Yeah. Culture? Yeah, this is a great question, Jacob. So, you know, cannabis overall, it's a beautiful plant. It's a plant that I personally believe is here to be a spiritual aid and ally in our lives, right? That's not the only thing for it, right? Because I'm sure that everyone listening can uh, recall one person or maybe even themselves in their life that maybe ended up dependent on the plant, that ended up numbing out with it, ended up just tuning out with it, right? So the important thing to understand is my whole mission is to ensure that people don't blame the plant for their own shortcomings, right? So cannabis, objectively, is a plant that allows for self-awareness, for healing, and also for pretty much anything that someone either consciously or unconsciously allows it to help them with. Now, here's the big challenge, right? When we talk about conscious cannabis, the idea of conscious cannabis, you know, at least as I say it, is the idea that you're aware of why you're choosing to connect with that medicine, right? You're conscious in doing so. Because what is the ultimate epidemic within the world of cannabis, as I've seen it working in the industry, also my own life and with the clients I've helped, is unconscious use. Now, I'll explain the dichotomy between unconscious use versus conscious use, just to get it, you know, perfectly framed for the conversation. So unconscious use is I'll, I'll relate it to myself, right? To not project it on anyone else. So when I was an unconscious user of cannabis, I wasn't like, you know, I was, um, you know, not respecting the plant or any of these things. I always had an affinity for the plant. I've been growing it for over 12 years. I have always found a love for the plant. And that was actually why I was so shocked when I discovered that I was still using it unconsciously, right? So what unconscious use looked like for me was when I was younger, I found that cannabis really helped with my anxiety, right? Years later, Cannabis truly helped my father through end of life. And that's really where I became like, whoa, okay, I really want to get the true power out to the people, right? But at the same time, I was dealing with limiting beliefs, limiting stories, subconscious programming, things like that, that I didn't know, because you don't know what you don't know. And what happened was, I ended up connecting with the plant unconsciously to numb out and tune out. <clears throat> and so what I would do is at that point in my life, I mean, there was many different phases of this, but at the time that I actually realized this, I was working at a dispensary that at first was directly in alignment with my values, my ethics, everything like that. And then uh, in a very fast motion, they became completely out of alignment. We got bought out by a corporation and a lot of like, you know, I've always looked at myself kind of like a pirate, right? Like I'm not really big into the corporate structure. I like freedom, et cetera. So when I first started working there, it was amazing. It helped me a lot. And then when we got bought out, I, you know, looking back in hindsight, of course, and this is part of my whole origin story, I started realizing that I was feeling very frustrated. I was feeling like I wasn't being seen there. I was feeling like they were taking advantage of me, right? But at the end of the day, I was the only one keeping myself there, right? I wasn't a victim, but yet I was 
unconsciously making myself into one, right? So what started to happen around that time, and it was happening before that, but this is like, I think the real meat and potatoes of the story. What happened was I would go to work and I was never an all day smoker. I've just never been good at that. Um, I have no idea how people are like able to like get a lot of work done with cannabis. Um, I can exercise, do things like that. But when it comes to like, you know, work, work, um, it's just not my medicine for that. So um, because I had all of these logical left brain, uh, you know, frameworks in place of like, well, I'm growing it myself. It's completely organic. I'm only using it once per night. I'm vaporizing it, which was all true. It was really all just to block me from the realization of like, no, dude, you're numbing something out. So what would happen was I would go to work. I would build up all the frustration necessary to go make a change, right? I would feel that feeling of like, oh, I don't like this place. And then I would go home and I would just unconsciously, hey, I connect with it every night. So why not tonight, right? There was no thought process in it. I just went home. It was like on autopilot. I would just grab my flower, pack a bowl of my uh, little crafty vaporizer, and I would just start connecting with cannabis. And then all of a sudden I'd be chill. I'd hang out. I'd, you know, watch some stuff on YouTube, um, you know, different, you know, teaching stuff. I'm an avid learner. So I just look into whatever was, you know, fascinating at that point for me. And then I'd wake up the next day and this cycle just repeated itself. And what happened was in 2019, I ended up going to a cannabis convention, the biggest one in the world, MJ BizCon. And through a series of very fortunate events, which we can get into if you'd like to, um, I realized that I was connecting with cannabis unconsciously as a result of connecting with MDMA and having a very hard open state. And in that moment, I decided, or actually I didn't decide, but what happened was I somehow flipped the pattern. The pattern before was to run away and make myself a victim. Oh, these people are doing this to me. If they weren't doing these things, then I would be happy, right? This kind of thirst trap. What happened in that moment was maybe because of the hard open state, I was able to go, Hey, I'm responsible for my well being. I'm responsible for my life. No one is to blame here except myself if I'm not happy in my life. Right. And so when I started realizing, like, why have I not been able to feel the, the real, like, depth to my feelings? The first thing that came to me was this idea that, like, hey, you're using cannabis to numb out. Right. Now, what happened in that moment was also I realized it's not cannabis's fault either. The plant never held the gun to my head. It never told me to connect with it every day. Sure, I might not have known we never got a user manual for this plan, none of us. But now that I knew better, I could do better. And it was up to me. No one was going to come save the day for me. And so what happened at that point was I started creating structure around like, okay, I'm only going to connect with cannabis on weekends, because during the weekdays is when I'm most prone to stress. And that's when I was numbing out the most. So I wanted to feel those things because if I was aggravated at work or any of these things, there needed to be a change. And I needed to be aware of like, really how frustrated I felt so that I could have the inspiration necessary and the motivation necessary to make that change. And so what ended up happening was I created that structure where Monday through Friday, I would be completely sober. I took a three month break uh, right off the bat, like cold turkey. But then when I came back to it, I started doing the structure. I started applying intention, the same things I did in a lot of other areas of my life, but I just never thought to do with cannabis. And we can take it from there. That's when things really started to blow up. And so you can see how when I was unconsciously using, and maybe some people listening can relate to this or resonate with it, it was just a thing I did. I wouldn't even notice, but all of a sudden I'm just smoking, right? It just, it was part of my daily habits. When I became conscious about it, there's this entire like, like structure now that I have around it. And it's not to like make myself into a rule book or any of those things. It was just like knowing myself enough to know, hey, the pattern was mostly to numb out during stressful situations. So during the most stressful situations, I'm going to specifically set myself a standard to not connect with the plant. Because I knew if I didn't create that structure, it would be so easy for me to go, well, you know, it was a Monday and, you know, I should start Tuesday because four days, you know, off better than five, you know, whatever crazy stories my mind would come up with, right? Because at that point, cannabis was a coping strategy for me. So whenever you get into things that help you cope uh, and the ego gets entwined into it, you're going to start being able to tell yourself really convincing stories. So it's important that I set that structure. And then from there, now, every time I connect with a plant, I'm really understanding what my why is, right? It doesn't mean that I sit there and do an hour of journaling before or anything like that. But it means that there's a conscious intention as to what I'm looking to receive from that medicine and also what I'm looking to give it in return to complete that energetic loop. And so that's a little bit of the dichotomy between, you know, what is cannabis and then what is specifically conscious cannabis? Yeah, really uh, <laughs> beautiful, <laughs> comprehensive there, Ryan. And uh, 
I just wanted to reflect back because so much of what you said, like in a strange way, you know, I came across your stuff through Aubrey Marcus maybe last summer. Mm. And I've been in relationship with cannabis for like six years before that. And it it never been like a particularly bad habit. Um mm. it had been profoundly insightful, it had been integral to healing processes. Um and I had kind of had some degree of discernment about, you know, I'm going to take a break for a little while and so on. Mm. Um, but it wasn't until last year that I ended up undergoing precisely what you've described. I took a four month break and got to the point where it was kind of, I could not smoke cannabis again. And that was a crazy thing for me because I had been so identified, like finding cannabis for me was like finding a missing part of myself where I was like, this was so meant to be. It's like finding your romantic partner or something, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. And so, I, and, and then coming out of that, your suggestion of like once a week or like on weekends, confining to weekends has just fit really, really well for me. And I, I just, I feel that energy of structure from you, not just like, you know, in the, in the ideas you're laying out, but like how you're laying it out and how you're communicating, <laughs> like you're kind of distilling and emanating that energy into everything you do so i really feel it's like an important part it, it, it's a big deal you've been carrying conscious cannabis and you're somebody who's only smoking it once a week or vaping it once a week rather and you know that's important it's important that it's somebody like you um rather than the all day smoker or the three times a day smoker and you know i've <laughs> I've been there at stages and it felt good at stages to do so. But uh, I think there's a, there's an evolving relationship maybe over time. And, and as we kind of get more structure or more healing uh, occurring in our lives, the relationship with cannabis has to grow too. Definitely. You know, it's, it's interesting you say that because this is the part where I like to tell anyone, please do not mistake anything I'm saying as like, me trying to say this is the way everyone should do it or this is the right way like i have people all the time it's the, one of the most interesting things ever especially being someone who went to school for psychology i've always been fascinated with the mind it's interesting i put these posts up these reels on instagram and they're simply what i feel like i'm not telling anyone you have to believe this or this is the right way because i'm also a big fan of quantum physics and so I understand that what's right for me is not right for everyone because we don't live in an objective reality, right? We live in a very subjective reality. But I also know from my own experience that sometimes I hear someone say something, and I'm like, that really resonates. And sometimes it's like, oh my God, where was this missing information? This is incredible. Sometimes it happens as a trigger, right? Where I'm like, oh, I don't want to hear that, right? And it can be really challenging to go into those things. But at the end of the day, I'll put these posts up of, you know, the one that usually gets the most uh, flack back is when I speak about the energy of the grower who grew it, right? There's always someone on there that decides to say, it's not that deep, blah, blah, blah. And I respond with, great for you. That's how it can exist. Nowhere in here am I telling you this is the way or the only way, right? But what my ultimate intention is, is to speak to this because like I say, also, it's like, hey, if you're someone listening and you're like, I smoke all day, every day, and I feel great. Cool. Like maybe it's not meant, maybe you're not meant to apply structure at this point in your life, or maybe ever, who knows, right? Everyone's got different karma is, et cetera, right? But my intention is that I started realizing that this was a challenge for so many people I talked with, right? That they just never heard of this idea of like, you know, really creating a structure around how often they connect with the plant deepening the relationship to the plant because that's the whole idea of what I do it it's not just to put an, you know unnecessary rules on yourself and make life into a job it's more so to be able to deepen your relationship with the plant and it's very similar to this right if you're dating a romantic partner that you really love right and maybe you realize at a certain point that like hey I haven't really like let him or her in to like really see me and maybe they haven't let me fully in either right and so you start connecting consciously with this individual and you start saying, hey, I really love you. And I'd really like to either seek out some therapy or some coaching or some intimacy exercises or go to a retreat together and deepen our connection. You know, the why underneath that is because you're looking to be fully seen. You're looking to truly experience love and seeing yourself reflected in that other person. 
and allow, like Ramdas says, that person to help you walk home, right? And so with cannabis, that's the whole like reason I do this, you know, because a lot of people ask why. Because I think a lot of men specifically, they see the structure and it's like, oh, okay, I get that structure. But structure is fantastic up until the point it's catastrophic, right? So I have very often in my life become way too structured. Perfect mm -hmm. example is with exercise, right? So I'm going to work out, you know, let's say six days a week. What happens if I wake up, I'm sore? Well, schedule says work out, so I'm doing it anyway, right? So it can get you into some slippery waters. So this is what I tell people. I go, in the beginning, if you're someone who's resonating with what I'm saying, and you're like, I want that. That sounds exciting to me. That feels like an expansion from my heart. Then what I recommend is if you've been dependent on the plant for a long time, I was a daily user for over 10 years, you know, I recommend sticking to a structure at first, right? Like for me, I stuck to that Monday through Friday structure religiously for about two years, like never missed a week of taking one day off, et cetera. After about two years, I would still struck, stick to that structure. But let's say if I go to Paul Check's house, right? And he's doing a workshop on a Thursday, you know, and there's people there and the situation feels right. I'm going to connect with cannabis, right? So, so like, but at the end of the day, I know when I get home, I have no problems on Monday. Okay, cool. Back to only weekends, right? So in the at the first stage, you want to prove to yourself you can do it. And the length of time that that will need to occur is going to be, I imagine, different for everyone. For me, it was about two years. For someone else, they might be able to go right into that. I'm not sure, right? But my objective here is to relay to people that like this is possible. This is an example of what it could look like. And if you resonate with this, hey, like dive into it, right? Like for me, I always look to follow my heart. And the most challenging part of it is that the heart is not logical. So when I got that pull to start my own business, fucking terrifying, right? Like, you know, I mean, running a podcast, doing these things, there's no like, you know, Tom Bill, you says it, right? Like the, the struggle is guaranteed and the success is not, right? Now it's a little bit dramatic language. I would say the challenges are mandatory. The success is maybe not, right? So at the end of the day, when you're following your heart, you don't know where it's going to lead you to. But just like how in many instances in life, the mystery to me is the best part, taking on that type of belief system of like, would I really want to know where I was going? Would I want to know, okay, you work at this job, you're going to work there for a year, then you're going to get promoted to this position, then five years later, you get promoted to that one. Like, I don't want my whole life laid out. And yet part of me, I realized did, but that part of me was not the part that was leading me to fulfillment. And so when I started diving in, like this all happened at once, right? Where I realized I was connecting with a plan unconsciously. I realized I wanted to leave my job. I realized I wanted to start my own business. I realized I wanted to have a podcast. All of this happened at once. And I just decided to say, fuck it and just go with it. And it can be scary. Yet at the same time, to me, like we were talking about before, right? Anxiety and excitement being the same feeling, just a different story on top of them. I think fear is actually when you transmute it, one of the best ways to feel alive because every fiber of your being is sensing that quote unquote fear. And I believe that fear can either be facing everything and rising or forgetting everything and running, you know, running. And so for me, like, you know, I really enjoy being able to speak about these things because they're the things that have really helped me a lot. And hopefully, right, like, you know, what I choose to believe also is that how we do anything is how we do everything. So if someone is lacking structure in, with cannabis, they're probably lacking it in some other areas of their life. Or maybe they have it, but they haven't optimized it yet. And so like what I want people to know is that the mind will make you think you might have like, let's say, 30 different issues, right? Oh, I'm not going to the gym. Oh, my God, I need to start going to the gym. I'm not meditating. I need to meditate more. Cannabis is just all throughout my life. And so you might think and get overwhelmed because you might think you have like, you know, 30 different problems. Well, if you start applying the structure successfully to one area of your life, you're going to really quickly realize in many cases that, oh, I actually just had one issue that was, or one pattern that was spanning out over many different areas of my life. Mm -hmm. So when you understand how to do this with cannabis, you're more able to understand how to do it with exercise, with meditating, with, you know, taking your partner on date nights, you know, and everything like that. So you know, I like to be a control alt delete for people. Like why close one tab? We can just hit control alt delete and close all the tabs at once, you know? So that's my hope with this as well, is that, you know, very similar to how Mr. Miyagi taught, you know, uh, bonsai tree practice, not just to grow a tree, right? But to also like really center into yourself. You know, I take a very Mr. Miyagi approach to what I do. <laughs> mm, yeah, nice, nice. Um, 
Gosh, I guess the the two things that are just shining out for me in this is, uh, first of all, insight and the experience of insight is like so fundamental to what cannabis has to offer. And it's mm. such a shame that the kind of stereotypical cultures, the stoner culture, the kind of the Bob Marley Rasta thing yeah. and the Seth Rogen, Edible, Howard and Kumar thing, none of those really represent this core property and value that so many of us have found in cannabis and we don't even need to necessarily dispel all of those because some of those things are true and mm. some of them have some value in them mm. but to actually bring this front and center and show that cannabis can be a profound catalyst for creativity a profound tool for insight and that experience of insight is exactly what i just heard in what you said, it's like you thought you had 30 different problems in your life and you have this shift in your state of being. And suddenly it's like, oh, this one way of being is threading through the whole mandala. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and so the second thing is this sense of like, in some sense, conscious cannabis culture isn't just about, it's like, in some sense, it's not about cannabis. Cannabis is like the thing in the middle, but it's really webbed to everything else. And so I like to think of it as, um, you know, being nested in an ecology of different practices. Mm. Uh, I know you practice several around cannabis and there's something about like the dialogue between all of those journaling, meditation, um, especially like an interpersonal practice as well, like things that are shifting your internal dialogue. Um, and so that's just really important to, to presence and to exalt. And that for me is a, is a core part of the beautiful vision for cannabis. And I, I think of it kind of as like a green pill, like you kind of sure. thought you were just getting into cannabis, but then it kind of like opens up <laughs> into all this other shit. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, it's, it's, it's funny you mentioned that I'll throw them real quick that, you know, it's like, I think for everyone, you know, we have what I choose to believe anyway, this is just my belief system. I choose to believe we come down here for a specific mission, if you will, right? And I believe that any of our mess, quote unquote, can become our mission and really is our mission. So for me to give an example of this, like, you know, at a certain point, I realized, oh my God, I'm in this mess of like, you know, having connected with cannabis unconsciously for so long, created these neural pathways of numbing out with it and tuning out with it. Oh my God, woe is me, right? That's one way to look at it. But that perspective shift that you were talking about was me actually realizing, wait a minute, what if that mess up and every other mess up was actually exactly what got me to here and I'm actually exactly where I get to be now and where I should be. And so I think for a lot of people, you know, it might not be cannabis for you. It might be something else that you're going, oh yeah, that thing. Maybe I'm in the wrong relationship. Maybe I'm at the wrong job. Maybe I am connecting with cannabis unconsciously and I'm getting a little triggered right now. Maybe I'm addicted to nicotine. Maybe I'm addicted to pornography. Whatever it is, you can allow that mess to become your mission if you choose to see it happening for you. There's no scientific study I can show someone that proves objectively that it's happening for them. It's simply a belief system that you have to choose to start believing. Because at the end of the day, no one's going to come save the day for us, right? So if we don't believe we're the hero of our own story, we will ultimately become the victim of someone else's story, you know? And so it's so important that we look at everything in our lives, as I found anyway, as information. And what can we do if we choose to believe that we're not just the director here, but we're also the narrator and the main character. And we're also, you know, the, the, the creator of the script itself, right? If we choose to believe we're all of those roles, well, now it opens up this perspective that allows us to look at life as if like, okay, what can I learn from everything? And that's one of my biggest things is I'd rather be a learner than a knower. And we can definitely get more into that. But, you know, overall, learners are always winning, you know, whether they get it, quote unquote, wrong, whether they find themselves in a mess and they go, okay, what can I learn here? Or they get it right and they go, okay, what can I learn here? How can I keep getting these types of results? You know, I'd much rather be a learner because as the famous quote goes, wise is the man who knows he does not know. Why? Because really nothing is objective, right? I could say, hey, I know what green is 100%, but do I really know? How do I know? I've only been in my own consciousness in this incarnation anyway. I've only been in this one meat suit. So I don't know objectively if I'm seeing green. Now, subjectively, I know that I'm seeing at least a shade of green, but I don't know that I'm seeing the same one as other people. 
And for a long time, I didn't think about that kind of stuff. I just thought, oh, the world is how it is, um, yada, yada, yada. And so it's cool to understand that, like, you know, again, like I've said before, it's like, I know my message is not for everyone. I didn't make it for everyone. Because if you're truly coming from your heart, your message is probably going to piss some people off. It's going to make some people go, oh, my God, this is amazing. But at the end of the day, you know, being able to be truthful with yourself and understand who you are and allows you to share vulnerably and not worry about if someone gets super triggered, you know, and, and like I said, you know, I get a lot of that on social media and I just send people love because I get it. You know, when I first heard this stuff, I didn't want to hear it either. I never want people to think that I'm trying to say this is the only way. So, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Mm. I want to pick up on the like you said, like, you know, knowing that you do not know and I'm reminded of that's kind of like Socrates, right? Yeah. And, um, I've been playing with an idea that cannabis can be a kind of like Socrates for us. Uh, like a lot of my passion in dialogue, talking with kind of people passionate about philosophy is to have that kind of encounter where, you know, my knowing is kind of suspended and I, I enter into a liminal space <laughs> where, um, where there's a possibility of transformation and then coming back, I can see my life in different ways. I can notice things I didn't notice before. Um, and so I wonder about cannabis being a kind of uh, something that we're in dialogue with, like, like I get the, I get the, you know, feeling from the kind of sp the spiritual way that you speak about cannabis, that you do kind of feel like you're engaging with a, an entity, or at least it's helpful to treat it as such. And mm -hmm. you talk about it as like the feminine, and that's been super, super helpful for me, like seeing how my relationship with cannabis and my relationship with the feminine are linked. But perhaps you could just share a bit more about like, how do you relate to cannabis as a dialogue? And then maybe like, how does that kind of, this is a big one, but how does that fit into a larger kind of metaphysics or like spiritual landscape for you? Yeah, this is a great question, Jacob, and I'm glad you asked because I actually talk about what I'm about to say um, not too often because most people, like, it's not that they don't understand what I'm talking about when I say it's an entity, but they usually don't get precise of like, what do you mean by an entity, right? So I'm glad you're bringing this up because very similar to how if you pull a tarot card, right? So you make an intention, like, I want to figure out what I, you know, what the best thing for me to do today is, whatever, right? You pull that card, you read it, right? But then something interesting happens. Then what happens is that reading triggers you to be able to relate it subjectively to something in your life. And now you've received a message, right? So very similar to the I Ching, right? The I Ching, I think is actually, I mean, it's my personal favorite method of divination uh, besides cannabis, because that's what I believe cannabis to be. And this is how I relate it. One way to say it is it's an entity. Uh, one way to say it is that it's a spirit. The ways that I like the most that aren't really the best marketing ways to say it, because most people don't really understand what I'm talking about. But when I get into these riff sessions, this is why I love to talk about cannabis. And I hope it lands for you and some of your listeners too. I believe cannabis to be an oracle. I believe it to be a source of divination. Where, for instance, right? I, I'm sure, I mean, you pretty much just dictated this experience, right? Where let's say you're in your normal level of thinking and you have a challenge, right? And like Albert Einstein says, you can't solve a problem from the same level of thinking that created it, right? So you're in this challenge, right? You're just, you're boxed into it, right? Now you connect with the plant, you're able to have the zoomed out view, and you're able to see different perspectives, right? So where the problem before you were boxed in, you couldn't find a way out, you were using maybe the left brain, logic, et cetera, not bad tools, just maybe not the right tool for this particular job. So then you are able to set an intention change your level of consciousness, get a different perspective, right? A high idea, as I call it, they come right in through the back of my head. Um, that's normally where, you know, a lot of the psychic senses are felt uh, is, you know, in the back of the head, like it drops into the mail slot as Eileen Day McCusick uh, talks about. She wrote Tuning the Human Biofield, super cool book, um, not about cannabis, but that was one of my favorite you know, descriptions of like, yeah, it just drops into the mail slot. So for me, like that's, I honestly feel cannabis to be the best and most powerful source of divination I found. And I'll tell you why, because with tarot and the I Ching, which I've already said, I love, you're making an attention, you're doing your either coin tosses, or you're pulling your card. And first, you're reading someone else's description of it. And then from that, you're then making your own meaning of it. I think ultimately, what is tarot or divination or any of these things doing, training you to understand that you have all the answers within you. 
So the less that you can read someone else's description of your particular question, the more you're going to have the experience of being that own, your own source of divination. So with cannabis, you're creating an intention, you're connecting with a plant and without reading anything from a book, without pulling anything from tarot decks or anything like that, you're hopefully anyway, receiving a message. And over time, if you choose to be conscious in that, you can learn that that ability is not just something that only happens with cannabis. It's something that is always able to be accessed, but the challenge is that it takes certain things in life, right? It takes having space in life. Like I've realized that one of the other reasons why I was craving cannabis so much back when I was connecting with it unconsciously was because I wasn't prioritizing uh, things correctly. Like I was prioritizing everything. And as a result, I had no time in my calendar. And I had a story going that like, this was me being successful, you know, like working hard, 14 hour days, like I wasn't miserable doing it. I loved it. Like it was fun. But it also I started realizing, you know, like, like there's certain signs for me, right? Because there's, there's part of me that loves that kind of stuff. And maybe, you know, you or some of your listeners can relate to this There's part of me that's like, yes, let's go conquer the world, right? And by conquer, I just mean go send it. There's also part of me, though, that's like, hey, man, you know, like, go take a walk in the woods, go have some space in your calendar, take a nap, you know, and that voice has been much more muffled than the other one. The other one's kind of dominated it. And so what I started realizing was another reason I was craving cannabis was because I knew when I connected with the plant, that other voice got an opportunity to be in the forefront. And I would have the time to create space in my life. And as soon as some space entered my life, the ideas start coming through all these things. But just very similar to how I found cannabis that helped me with a lot of things with work and things like that, that's another way that could easily, you know, allow me to become dependent on the plant for those things. So to go back to the idea of conscious cannabis, another layer of it is being able to learn from the plant, right? Just like a teacher. If you go to take a, I don't know, algebra class, right? And you're really excited about algebra. Well, you're going to pay attention to what the teacher says, right? Now, if you go into that algebra class, and you're excited to be there, teacher gives you homework, and you just kind of mess around and you just listen to the teacher talk. And you're like, Oh, this is cool. It's not inherently bad. But if you're really serious about algebra, you're going to want to do the work on the side. Mm. So with cannabis, I talk about this as the what versus the how. So cannabis, I Ching, tarot, coaches, mentors, whoever you're sourcing out for guidance, they can give you the what, right? Like, oh, man, I'm connecting with the plan unconsciously. Oh man, I'm working too much. Oh man, I need to meditate more. But it's up to us to figure out the how. And I think this is where a lot of people get confused. They unconsciously, maybe sometimes consciously, but mostly unconsciously expect the plant or plants or teachers or mentors or whatever insert thing here to do the work of the how for them. And that is our end of the bargain, right? Like we get to come out of that experience and go, whoa, I just was able to access a different level of consciousness that I'm not able to normally access. Why is that, right? And so maybe then you get a download of like, well, dude, your schedule's too packed, right? Then what would normally happen, and this is exactly my story, if you're wondering <laughs> where this is coming from, but you know, then what will happen is that voice will go, well, dude, the only way to be successful is to just fucking send it, right? And if you have the awareness of that other part of you that's trying to say, hey, maybe that's not the full answer, you can then start to realize, ah, these are two different parts of me. And they both want me to be successful. They both want me to be happy. But they're opposite sides of the coin. They're polarities, right? One side is like, dude, just create space in your life. That's all you need. The other side is like, dude, just work all the time. That's all you need. Well, just like I talk about with cannabis and everything in life, one of my core values is the middle way, like the Tao talks about. In a world that is currently hyper-polarized, right, where Meat is the best thing ever. Be on the carnivore diet. Hey, meat's terrible. Be on the vegan diet. Hey, eggs are amazing. They're incredible. Hey, they'll give you cancer. Um, you know, hey, you should uh, drink this kind of water. No, you should drink this kind of water. It's like, you know, we've forgotten as a society that like ultimately nothing is inherently good or bad. Uh, it's just thinking that makes it so. And it's just how we're connecting with these things. And so I always talk about the middle way. So I'm like, okay, there's part of me that wants to relax. There's part of me that wants to go. How can I now, as the head of the dinner table, this metaphorical dinner table with all these parts of me talking and saying their wants and needs, how can I, as the father figure, look at all these and make sure they all feel like they're getting attention from me, but also that I'm the one in control of like, okay, this is how we're going to do it. 
you know, Monday through Friday, we're not going to connect with cannabis anymore. Why is that? Because of this reason. Now on the weekends, we are going to, right? For an example. And what's going to happen is usually one of those voices is going to speak up and go, hey, I don't really like that. I'm going to go, well, you know, when when we're able to see like a full perspective of the picture, right? And we're ready, we're, we're, we're able to reorient ourselves as that head of the dinner table, just like how parents can't always make all of their kids happy. And, and give them what they want, but they know they're going to be able to give them what they need. Sometimes these parts of us need that because a lot of times they're looking for direction and they end up because none of us are usually aware of this stuff, unless we get deep into parts work or psychology or these kind of things, you know, they're looking for guidance from us, right? Like the soul part of us. And if we're not connected to that part of us and we're disempowered, we don't know that we can even give those parts of us attention or that they even need that. And so it's not like people are choosing most, in most cases anyway, to wake up and live a disempowering life, be addicted to cannabis or anything. They just don't know what they don't know. And so a big part of why I love talking about this stuff so much is just because I know for me, a lot of the things that are now my biggest interests, I just heard someone talk about their experience of, you know? And so it's really amazing to be able to like, you know, tie all this stuff together and be able to really fit it into the macrocosm, right? Because every microcosm is an example of the macrocosm, you know, as within, so without, as above, so below. So that's a little bit about how I see cannabis as an entity, and then where I feel it really fits into the bigger picture in our experience of life. And we can definitely dive much more down that rabbit hole of kind of like what I think, um, you know, cannabis is here to do, the spirit of the plant and how it acts and what I've noticed. Um, but that's a little bit to get started anyway. Oh my goodness, brother. I think it's going to be pot two dialogue. Yeah. We get into that, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So thank you. First and foremost, um, that was really helpful. Um, I want to kind of just juxtapose your experience with mine. Cause I feel like I'm really, I've really embodied the opposite end of it. Like I very mm-hmm. much was trying to be a freelance artist, engaging in full-time philosophical inquiry, walking around in nature, transformative dialogue, so on. And I was engaging with cannabis more or less every day Mm. um, to good effect in many ways. But, you know, I I didn't have sufficient structure. I was like almost, I had gone too far counterculture, too far game B. I had like broken way (laughs) out of the matrix to the degree I wasn't grounded in it, uh, you know, in terms of work and structure and, and so on. Um, and when I stopped smoking for that four months and I came back to an environment where I didn't have like the same kind of terrific nature access that I had before, Mm. ended up pulling in Mm -hmm. on different practices. So I started like going to the gym very regularly. I also started Mm. praying very regularly and I had this like Mm. gym prayer duo I would go work out, like do the willfulness, do the fight, do the struggle. And then I would go to the church and sit and surrender. And it's for me, I'm, I'm kind of exploring that intersection of like Christianity and psychedelics a little bit of like Mm -hmm. the reason I was able to re-engage with God in some way was through psychedelic experience. And those um, qualities that we get of like, you know, waves of bliss or or healing or just kind of that deep reorientation, I was able to progressively find, like I could access that with prayer. Mm. Um, Now that being said, I'm, you know, cannabis is still fucking huge tool in the arsenal. And I think when we zoom out to the culture at large, you know, post-industrial godless capitalism (laughs) entering into this chaotic, time that we're in um it's much more on the side that you've described of your own experience for the most Mm -hmm. part i don't think it's a lack of the feminine uh, sorry i don't think it's too much of the feminine and too much nature and too much coming into the being mode it's like not enough and this is where i feel like there's a huge um potential and a lot of people are kind of just finding their way into this there's a lot of people that are like basically sick they're in dis-ease they're diseased by uh the ways of living that the culture is kind of provided for them and they're finding cannabis and so um my 
vision is almost that cannabis has like, and without kind of idolizing it and putting it like, like cannabis is the solution, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like crisis of connection between one another with ourselves, crisis of ecology, lack of connection with nature, um, collective trauma healing, all of these things are kind of nested around challenges we face today. And somehow cannabis kind of weaves through a lot of those. And it's really important to say like conscious cannabis, because as you say, like it can just be a cope to do this to the shitty job and, <laughs> you know, what have you go and watch porn and watch Netflix and eat a load of shit. Um, yep. So I just want to kind of invite you to to speak a bit more to your kind of like, I, I know you don't always do this and you're quite careful to kind of like always draw from personal experience and people mm. you're meeting. But like, if you're like drawing on the sum totality of that and also looking out at like what's kind of going awry in culture, where do you feel like, um, and I, well, like what kind of vision for cannabis would you articulate? Yeah, for, for you know, America for the world. <laughs> yeah. So Jacob, you brought up some great things. And so I'll say it like this, right? So based on what I choose to believe, what I believe is that we're spiritual beings having a human experience, right? So I believe that a lot of us, we might not be aware, but something feels uneasy in us, right? And it's challenging when we've been brought up in a world where everyone else is just flying around, being productive, working. No one really knows why they're doing it. They're just like, well, I work for 40 years. I buy the house with the white picket fence. And then I'm 65. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I get to retire. And, you know, I think that like a lot of us, especially our generations now are being like, does anyone really know why they're doing any of this? Like, this doesn't really make sense. And for a lot of us now, we're starting to realize like this whole idea of like, oh, we are gods in training, right? Like, we are not a drop in the ocean, but the ocean in a drop, as Rumi said, right? So if that is true, then I think why so many people are getting called the cannabis, psychedelics, etc., is because we live in a world that is so left brain dominant, that it takes a long time to have an experience in a sober state of reality, in most cases, for like the average individual, that's going to allow them to experience what they're what they feel they're missing. So like in the modern day and age, you know, if someone's like, I'm feeling empty inside, are you going to be like, well, go start meditating for an hour a day for 20 years. And after that, you should start feeling something right. Like, I'm not saying it doesn't, it, it always takes 20 years. But for most people, we need instant gratification, our attention span is shorter than ever, right? All of these things, yet we know something is off. And so I think a lot of people are reaching out to cannabis and psychedelics, because it can be one of the fastest ways in a world of instant gratification to experience the other side of things, right? Like you were talking about this more feminine side, this more connected to nature side. It's not that, you know, this, this go, go for the win and all of this stuff is not good. But again, it's out of balance is what I see for most people. And it definitely was for me. And I still struggle with it at times, you know? So what I find is that I think psychedelics and cannabis can be an amazing step to allowing people to connect deeper because it can give them almost like a quick look at the back of the book like the analogy I give for this is that let's say you're, you know, figuring out a math equation, right? And you're just like stumped, man. You, you literally have been working on this for like, let's say five years, right? Or maybe a lifetime. And you start believing there's no answer to this. Like, what am I even doing here? There's no point to this, this math equation. How do I know it's even right? I just feel this need to, to solve it, but I just, I, I don't know if there's an answer. And then you meet someone who goes, what if I could show you the answer just real quick and show you what the final product is, right? Maybe the answer is 54, but you don't know how I got there. But you now know objectively somehow that that is the right answer and there is an answer for this math equation. So if you can get that glimpse and know, oh my God, okay, I am onto something. There is a way here. Now you're going to be more motivated to do whatever work necessary to figure out that math equation. Does it mean that it's all going to be sunshine and rainbows after that? No. Does it mean that you're always going to remember? No, maybe sometimes you forget that you saw the answer. And maybe then you're going to connect with something that can show you the answer again. Now, the important thing here is this is why I everything I do in Connect with Cannabis in the program is about allowing people to, yes, get these glimpses behind the veil, 
but then be able to contextualize why meditating, breath work, and these daily sober practices really matter because you don't want to always rely on anything external to you to be able to find faith in life, to be able to find the answer at the back of the book, right? You want to be able to remember that you saw the answer. So in this analogy, maybe it's that you write down the answer and you, you know, every day you look at that answer, right? To remind yourself, like, there is an answer here. There is an answer, right? Doesn't mean that every day you're going to have the same connection to that answer, but it means that you're doing the work to create new neural pathways to remind yourself each and every day, I know there is an answer. So therefore, I'm now willing to do whatever it takes to get there. And so with cannabis and other psychedelics and any of these kind of things, it's important to realize that they're not the moon or sun, right? They're not like, they're not the, in this analogy of the moon or sun, the moon or sun being like our, you know, connection to spirit right? Like our connection to our true nature. They are not that, but they can be the finger that points us back to that when we become disoriented. And in the mm -hmm. modern day world, man, there's so many thirst traps. Like there are so many things vying for our attention. And it's not just like shiny colors. I mean, there's like science and algorithms and all of these things going behind like, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I mean, like it's wild. If you really understand the psychology of marketing and everything, how fucking lethal a lot of these marketers are now because they're using AI and things like that. So there's going to be every story, like it's going through your mind of why today you can skip meditating. It's not that important. You're too busy. You don't have the time for it. Those are the thirst traps of your instant gratification, short attention spam. I have it too, right? So I've over time, every day when I wake up, I have the same routine. I meditate, then I do my mystery school rituals and all my prayers. And then I do uh, 30 minutes of breath work. And then from there, I start moving my body. Every single day I wake up, the first voice I hear is, you don't need to meditate today, dude. You know, you feel fine. And I've just gotten better at knowing, oh, there you are again. Okay, cool. And now I just go through it anyway, because I know how much better I feel when I know that I can access that feeling of being whole without anything necessary. Now, does it mean that I don't connect with cannabis or anything anymore? No, 100%, because that's not the only question I had, right? Like, I truly believe and know that my true nature is divine, right? I know that everyone's nature is divine. I know that everything's nature is divine, right? If we all come from the same source, then how is anything, even this speaker or this microphone, how is any of this not part of God, right? It's the way that the animists view the world. So I know that. But also there's sometimes that I have different questions. And like I talk about with the teacher analogy, if you are really interested in algebra, do you always want to be in Algebra 1 or do you want to go to Algebra 2, Algebra 3, I don't know, trigonometry, whatever comes next, right? You want to be able to level up over time. And so what I talk about a lot with the plant is that you can keep going back unconsciously or even consciously for the same questions. And the plant will help you. Maybe sometimes it'll be like an Italian mother and throw a wooden spoon at you, but it will help you, right? But the plant has a lot more fun, I believe anyway, when it can start moving you on to different lessons. And sometimes, most of the time, what happens is I'll know maybe what my question is. Like, you know, let's say like, hey, I'm having a disagreement with Rachel, you know, and I feel as though I'm really right in this, right? Like, but am I not seeing something? And then what gets shown to me is totally different than what I thought I was going to get. That's what normally happens. And that can be one of the other challenges of working with these medicines is that when you start connecting with them consciously, you're essentially understanding that you're connecting with these plants to illuminate the parts of you that either you don't know exist or maybe unconsciously you do and you have refrained from accessing because either you were told specifically when you were a child that those parts of you were not good or it, like in my case, my parents always told me I was loved, that I could do anything I wanted, et cetera, but I witnessed how they treated themselves, right? So they would tell me, Ryan, you can do anything, but then I would catch them in their stories of, well, I couldn't do that, you know? And so I ended up learning as a result that there were certain things I could do, certain things I couldn't, certain parts of me that were good, certain parts of me that, you know, weren't so pretty. And as a result, going, going through life, that's when I started experiencing anxiety and these kind of things. It was those parts of me starting to like talk back and starting to get you know, frustrated and throw temper tantrums. And so now when I connect with these plants, I understand like there might be a whole thing. This just happened actually recently, like a whole new layer of awareness started forming around some very deep seated patterns. And it wasn't easy necessarily, but I've done enough of this work now to know, just like going to the gym, 
that if my trainer comes and is like, all right, we're doing a heavier weight set and deadlifts today, there's a part of me that's like, oh my God, am I going to be able to do this? But there's also a part of me that knows I've showed up every single day to the gym for the last 10 years. So why would this today, why would today be any different? So I can be in a state of like anxiety and also excitement at the same time simultaneously. It just depends on being the head of the dinner table, what voice and what story I allow to run my life, you know? And so that's a lot of how I feel about, you know, cannabis, why it's becoming so, why it's been so popular, but also like what it could do for us if we choose to be able to actually learn from it. Because otherwise, we all know the classic lazy stoner stereotype, right? Now, what I tell everyone is cannabis doesn't make us anything. It doesn't make us lazy. It doesn't make us paranoid. It doesn't make us anxious. It reveals all of us to us. And depending on, you know, who you are and what perspective you are in each day, you might see those parts of you as, oh my God, this is amazing. This is hilarious. I never knew that I could be a stand-up comedian. I never knew that I could, you know, do this or that or any of these things. Or if let's say you're in a challenging state of mind that day and you see those parts of you, it could be a dark night of the soul, right? So understanding that with great power comes great responsibility. You know, the whole idea of being conscious is that you're taking accountability for the fact that the plant is not the cause of your problems. It's not what made you feel anyway, right? You are the responsible for who and what you are and how you feel every day. And so if we choose to take that on and then we connect with these medicines, what I found is they can be a fantastic way to see that answer at the back of the book and then have the motivation and inspiration necessary to get the structure built out so that every single day we're creating those new neural pathways. You have fully put Ryan. Oh Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just uh we've got about five minutes left, but I just wanted yeah. to speak to like you don't necessarily know what the medicine's gonna be. Like you can set right. the intention, but sometimes she's gonna come back with something. Like I had a session recently where I went to smoke and it just dropped me into like my sense of, of like aggression and my capacity for aggression in like a very kind of calm distilled way and I just sat in that for like the whole session and I got all these insights into like how that energy like flows through all these different areas of life and it's like you know that's not really what you would expect if you're having this predisposition of that feminine agent is just going to be like oh, I'm going to relax or I'm going to you know be gentle with myself or connect with nature or so on so it really can be um going in a lot of different directions and that kind of like gentle, um, yeah, gentle touch and like ongoing sensing and discernment that you've kind of embodied today around it seems really, really, um, really important, especially, you know, this sense of the symphony of selves um, mm -hmm. and the internal world. And, you know, there's a lot of people going around that have no idea of that kind of notion at all. Notionally, they're still like, I'm just one thing. Um, and then, you know, smoking is going to bring out those parts that maybe need to be, to be worked on. And sometimes it's going to be anxious, but I'm with Joe Rogan on this. I think those anxious ones are like huge, huge learning, um, terrains. So Yeah. Definitely, dude. You know, what I'll say real quick with that is, you know, it's important that we understand this stuff, Jacob, because we're cannabis and other things too, pornography, all these things, right? Nothing is inherently bad or good, right? But when you have something that can provide external feelings of comfort, and most people are living in some way, shape or form, some form of discomfort, if we don't understand that that's what's going on, and that all we notice is that our lives are getting more and more frustrating. And then thank God, cannabis or pornography or alcohol or insert the coping mechanism here uh, is here. Then what's going to happen is we're going to fail to understand that we can provide ourselves that comfort and that we can actually learn from the plant how to do that for ourselves. You know, And I think that in the modern day world, there's never been more things vying for our attention, like I said, right? And so it's important that we understand that like, hey, it's up to us to really figure this stuff out. And like you were saying with those parts of you that are anxious, you know, I think it was um, uh, Joseph Campbell that stated, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek, right? And I'll share my own experience here real quick about like, in my experience, those parts of me that led me for 10 years to want to get away from them, took about literally an hour of fully feeling 
to be able to connect with. Now, did that fix them? No, it's just like having kids. Like they have a tantrum and then they, you get them happy again. It doesn't mean they're not going to have another tantrum the next day. But every time you can bring them back from that tantrum, you know, you have a little bit more confidence in like your ability to be a parent, right? And so it's very similar with our parts. And for anyone who's interested in what I mean by parts, like there's, you know, this system called internal family systems. And it is absolutely powerful, dude. Like out of all the different coaching practices and things I utilize with my clients, I find parts work to be just for me, something that really resonates the most. And so there's some great books out there, greater than the sum of your parts, no bad parts, et cetera. It's very easy for people to start doing this by themselves with themselves, right? So I like teaching people how to fish rather than just giving them a fish, you know? And so for anyone who's interested in doing this stuff and diving down this rabbit hole, it's it's a simple process. It doesn't mean it's easy, right? It can definitely be challenging, but the process of doing parts work can be simple, you know? And so if you're someone who wants to get started on this, check out those books and start applying it to cannabis. You know, I found working with cannabis to be much more like cooking than baking. So it doesn't take very precision stuff to work with the plant. It just takes being aware enough, creating some structure. Um, you know, of course, download the free conscious cannabis guide that will give you the highly optimized way, which is our proven process to guide you into like creating that structure and also creating intentions having ceremonies integrating thereafter, but that's a great place to start, you know? And, and again, if someone, if, if anyone listening to this is resonating, follow the breadcrumb trail. I have no idea where it's going to end up for you, but I do know in my experience that when you follow that first breadcrumb, it always leads to a second one. And eventually you start looking around and you go, holy shit, this is really fucking cool. And I would have never dreamt of this for myself because I think that in our limited perspective of the mind, we could never dream of how amazing our life could be, right? That's going to come from here, you know? This is a great tool to help this figure out how to get there, but this is not, this shouldn't be leading the race, right? And I say that every day, I want my feminine energy to become, to come before my masculine energy. And what I mean by that is, as soon as I wake up in the morning, I want to tune into my heart. I want to figure out what my heart wants, what curiosities it has. And then I want to enact this to go get that stuff done. Because if I do this first, it's just going to fall on whatever programming is in there telling me, oh, I got to do this and that. And then before I know it, it's been three hours and now on calls and I haven't done my meditating or anything because my mind told me I had to be productive first or any of these things. So you want to put the cart before the horse, not after it, you know? So that's another little tip I'll give in conclusion here <laughs> from personal experience. <laughs> yeah, that is a beautiful, beautiful note for us to close on. I sincerely resonate with that. And uh, I'm going to have to check out the Conscious Cannabis Guide from Highly Optimized. Yeah, uh, I'd love to know if you are going to be doing any retreats or kind of cannabis gatherings in the U.S. this mm. year, because I'd love to be on one. And uh, yeah, if there's anything else coming up and how people can connect with you and connect with your work. Yeah, absolutely, Jacob. So I'll say that the easiest way to reach me is on Instagram at the real Ryan Sprague. Uh, S P R A G U E is my last name, and we also have the business account at highly optimized. So we do all the podcast releases and a lot of informative posts on highly optimized, but also my profile is all cannabis stuff too. I throw in some other stuff too. The algorithm for some reason just I don't know loves when I talk about cannabis. So I'm like, there's a lot more to my life than just cannabis. But at the end of the day, I mostly chat about that stuff um, on there. You can also find our website, which we just redid. It's amazing. Uh, highlyoptimized.me. You can find out all the info about Connect with Cannabis, our certification program. Uh, you can find all the info about Grow with Cannabis, our 17-week self-guided course to help you grow the highest quality cannabis on planet Earth and save 70% on average of your monthly cannabis expenses uh, and just have a ton of fun doing it. And then with regards to retreats, um, so it's funny, me and my business partner, Alex, we used to host quite a few retreats um, before we got started with Connect with Cannabis and Grow with Cannabis. And then about two years ago, just about um, all of this happened, right? Where, um, you know, actually I hosted a retreat and on the calendar, I had Cannabis Workshop and I had already hosted cannabis ceremonies for most of the people there. So I didn't want to do the same thing that a lot of these individuals had already uh, gone through. So I just kind of left it open. And I was like, I just had this feeling, eh, I'll, I'll figure it out. And five minutes before the workshop, I had this boom, drop it in the mail slot, this idea, oh, conversation with cannabis, right? What if I did parts work, but instead of doing it with like our own parts, what if I talked to the spirit of the plant? So I tried this out on everyone there. They loved it. And they were like, hey, do you have anything else like this? This is really valuable. So that's when I started building the product. So since then, we haven't hosted a retreat and we just started talking about bringing them back into fruition. So I will definitely keep you updated because in-person stuff is fantastic. I do 
do in-person workshops with my buddy Christopher August for a project we have going called Breathe with Cannabis. It's cannabis and breath work. And one thing about combining those two things is that cannabis produces melatonin in the brain. Melatonin is a precursor to endogenous DMT. Obviously, when you're breathing, endogenous DMT is created in one way through breathing in the lungs. And so when you increase the precursor, you're going to have some very transcendental experiences. And so we've been doing those. We do them online as well. We just recently did one in LA, but I'll keep you updated on all of those fronts. But the earliest thing someone can do right now, uh, well, the easiest thing is actually hopping in our free Facebook group. I do a free call every Wednesday in there. It's a great way to get connected with us. Download the Conscious Cannabis Guide. A lot of info in there that people will find exciting if they've resonated with this. And then our next Connect with Cannabis course starts on 420. Um, so if you're interested in taking the deep dive into a 12-week certification program where we're going to be teaching you all the science, all the experiential ceremony work, uh, and also how to facilitate and coach this modality for other people, uh, buy the ticket and take the ride into that. You can find the qualifying call link on the website or on my uh, link tree in my bio. And uh, other than that, man, you know, you can check out the podcasts, uh, the highly optimized podcast, which I'm currently on a hiatus from, but I have 130 episodes out. It's super fun. And then the This One Time on Psychedelics podcast, uh, which I'm releasing an episode every Friday. Super fun. I love connecting with people. If you resonated, reach out, uh, you know, tell me what, you know, thing resonated. Let's chat about it. And uh, yeah, I love this stuff, man. Thank you again, Jacob. This has been absolutely incredible, man. You're a great host. <laughs> Hallelujah, Ryan. Really loved that. Loved how you uh, spontaneously set up that workshop and uh, right. yeah, many blessings and all the best with the, the year ahead. Thanks, brother. Thank you. And thank you to thank everyone you. listening.